to fight, fight for over a hundred years. And despite the residential schools, despite the epidemics of smallpox and tuberculosis, despite the enfranchisement, despite the reserve, despite all the assimilatory policies of Canada that have existed up until the modern day, our system of governance and the Wet'suwet'en system of governance has persevered and they have remained strong as is demonstrated by the five clans of the Wet'suwet'en when they evicted coastal gas link from their territories. They have made it clear that they have never consented to that project on their territories. And they have fought for too long to make that voice recognized within a system that is inherently racist within a system that inherently tries to erase the voice of indigenous peoples, of traditional indigenous governments, while replacing us with imposed Indian Act models of governance. Because the ban councils are accountable to the federal government, but the hereditary chiefs, the Dineze and the Sakaize of the Wet'suwet'en are accountable to the people they are accountable to their house groups. They are accountable to the land, the territories on which they have resided for thousands of years. And this is, it is not the place of British Columbia to come in and say, you know, this means nothing. It's not their place for the Supreme Court of British Columbia to come in and say that indigenous law is not effectual within Canadian law. It is not their place to come in and say that we can assault you with RCMP, that we can displace you from your lands, we can set up exclusion zones to limit you from going on to your own territories, that we can impose our law, our law which has been oppressing you, which has been impressing, oppressing indigenous peoples for over a hundred years. It's not the place of British Columbia to do that. And especially in light of the recent United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that they've adopted. <coughs> it is shameful. Shameful. It is shameful that Horgan has said it is not retroactive. Right. Because in this country we have over 500 years of colonialism, 500 years of baggage, 500 years of oppression. And he thinks he could wipe that all clean and only look towards the future. That is shameful. Shame. And clearly, after what we've seen tonight, and our worries about what might happen up on Unistot and Yinta with another RCMP raid, it is clear that they have not learned from the past. It is clear that they are pushing forward blindly. It is irresponsible, it is dangerous and is putting our lives on the line. Because the Premier has refused to meet with the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs. Shame. 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 And the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs have been patient. They have been patient for over a hundred years. The Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs, they made it clear. They want to talk leader to leader, face to face, in a respectful manner between the Wet'suwet'en peoples, Canada and British Columbia. They don't want the middlemen. They don't want random ministers being sent their way. They've made it very clear that they are the decision makers on their territory. They are the title holders on their territory. They even fought for this in the Supreme Court of Canada in the 1997 Delgamuk vs. British Columbia decision. We are unarmed! They have guns! We are unarmed! They have guns!